every organization has its own unique culture. The character of a company's culture or work climate defines how we do things around here, its approach to people management, and the chemistry that permeates the work environment. Corporate culture is a company's internal work climate and is shaped by its core values, beliefs, and business principles. A company's culture is important because it influences its traditions, work practices, and style of operating. Some companies have so-called high-performance cultures in which the standout cultural traits are a can-do spirit, pride in doing things right, no-excuses accountability, and pervasive results-oriented work climate in which people go the extra mile to meet or beat stretch objectives. In high-performance cultures, there's a strong sense of involvement on the part of personnel and an emphasis on individual initiative and creativity. Performance expectations are clearly stated for the company as a whole, for each organizational unit, and for each individual. Issues and problems are promptly addressed, and there's a razor-sharp focus on what needs to be done. A high-performance culture in which there's constructive pressure to achieve good results is a valuable contributor to good strategy execution and operating excellence. Results-oriented cultures are permeated with a spirit of achievement and have a good track record in meeting or beating performance targets. As a company's strategy evolves, an adaptive culture is a definite ally in strategy execution. The hallmark of adaptive corporate culture is willingness on the part of organization members to accept change and take on the challenge of introducing and executing new strategies. In direct contrast to change-resistant cultures, adaptive cultures are very supportive of managers and employees at all ranks who propose or help initiate useful change. The distinctive characteristic of an unhealthy corporate culture is the presence of counterproductive cultural traits that adversely impact the work climate and company performance. Let's take a look at five particularly unhealthy cultural traits. A politicized internal environment is unhealthy because political infighting consumes a great deal of organizational energy and often results in the company's strategic agenda taking a backseat to political maneuvering. In companies in which internal politics pervades the work climate, empire-building managers pursue their own agendas, and the positions they take on issues are usually aimed at protecting and expanding their turf. The support or opposition of politically influential executives and or coalitions among departments with vested interests in a particular outcome typically weighs heavily in deciding what action the companies take. Change-resistant cultures encourage a number of undesirable or unhealthy behaviors, like avoiding risks, hesitation in pursuing emerging opportunities, and widespread aversion to continuous improvement. Change-resistant companies have little appetite for being first movers or fast followers, believing that being in the forefront of change is too risky and that acting too quickly increases vulnerability to costly mistakes. They are more inclined to adopt a wait-and-see posture, learn from the missteps of early movers, and then move forward cautiously with initiatives that are deemed safe. Sometimes a company reigns as an industry leader or enjoys great market success for so long that its personnel start to believe they have all the answers or can develop them all on their own. Such confidence breeds arrogance. Company personnel discount the merit of what outsiders are doing and what can be learned by studying best-in-class performers. Benchmarking and a search for the best practices of outsiders are seen as offering little payoff. The big risk of the must-be-invented-here mindset and insular cultural thinking is that a company can underestimate the competencies and accomplishments of rival companies and overestimate its own progress. Companies that have little regard for ethical standards or are run by executives driven by greed and ego gratification are scandals waiting to happen. Executives exude the negatives of arrogance, ego, greed, and an ends justify the means mentality in pursuing overambitious revenue and profitability targets. Senior managers wink at unethical behavior and may cross the line to unethical and sometimes criminal behavior themselves. It's not unusual for companies to have multiple subcultures with values, beliefs, and integrated behaviors and attitudes varying to some extent by department, geographic location, division, or business unit. These subcultures within a company don't pose a problem as long as the subcultures don't conflict with the overarching corporate work climate and are supportive of the strategy execution effort. Multiple subcultures become unhealthy when they're incompatible with each other and the overall corporate culture. 
the existence of conflicting business philosophies and values eventually leads to inconsistent strategy execution. Changing a company culture that impedes proficient strategy execution is among the most toughest management tasks. It's natural for a company personnel to cling to familiar practices and be wary, if not hostile, to new approaches towards how we do things around here. A company's culture is important because it influences the organization's actions and approaches to conducting business. In a very real sense, the culture is a company's organizational DNA.